This, viewers, is a brand new Trek Madone SLR. The Madone is one of the greatest race bikes of all time, a true icon of a sport. And this latest generation is, it's fair to say, the most striking yet. And today we'll find out just how fast it is and how aero it is with some wind tunnel testing. So without further ado, let's dive in. So what the heck is going on with this brand new Madone? Well, I won't bore you with all the nitty gritty details. Instead, you can watch my first look video linked above and down below for all the details. But I'll go through some of the standout features and my impressions of them from living with the bike for the last few weeks. Now, the biggest feature on the bike is what they call the isoflow. And basically, it's a result of them getting rid of the iso speed decoupler that was on the last generation bike a feature that separates the seat tube from the rest of the frame to allow the seat posts and saddle to come back to provide a smooth ride in the saddle. First debuted on the Damani Endurance bike many years ago. Now, while it did deliver a really smooth ride on the old Madone, in my experience, making it one of the smoothest riding aero bikes, it did add a chunk of weight. And turns out the pros, because this is a race bike designed for the pros, didn't actually use it, didn't adjust it, left it in the stiffest setting the whole time. So I had got rid of it and saved a chunk of weight. So new Madone is lighter than the previous version and this, the range topping SLR9 with SRAM red ETAP axis, Bond Traeger ALS wheels in a size 56 with no bottle cage, weighs on my scales 7.36 kilograms, which is pretty good, it has to be said, but, a big but, that brand new giant Propel I featured on the channel just a few weeks ago weighs 6.9 kilograms. Yes, I had Dual Race versus SRAM Red here, but they are both range chopping bikes and that's quite a big weight difference. So while the weight savings on this new bike are impressive, they're not nearly impressive enough when Giant can make an aero bike that is so much lighter. Now, if you are cynical, you might point to this as being a gimmick and it well may be. Trek does make aero claims for it and it also says it offers compliance but from riding it for the last few weeks, it's definitely a firmer riding bike than the old Madone. Not quite as good at soaking up vibrations and rough roads in my experience. I've only had the bike for about three weeks, but I've ridden a serious amount in that time. And I've had no issues with the creaking, the seat post slipping down or anything like that. But three weeks is not a long-term test and a year's riding on the bike will be required to see whether there are any issues around this. But Trek is confident they've done their homework, done their testing to make sure there shouldn't be any issues at all. But we'll have to take a long term view on that for sure. So that ISO flow definitely grabs the headlines and definitely divides opinion. But just as exciting as that is a brand new handlebar up front and some quite impressive claims for the weight savings and the aero going on here. So while they managed to save 150 grams from the frame, they also managed to save the same weight from the handlebar and stem, which is very impressive. So it's a really sleek looking handlebar, really skinny. They've removed as much excess material as possible and does look very striking. And then it's narrow, 42 in the drops and 39 in the tops. So the handlebar follows a trend of narrow angle over hoods to reduce your frontal surface area and that when you read through the details of the new bike are where most of the aero savings actually come from. Less so the ISO flow and more the brand new front end. Naturally, all the cables and brake hoses are internally routed, whether DI2 or SRAM in this example. You have adjustment with a stack height here and it's a very seamless looking handlebar. If you're enjoying the review so far, I do hope you are, then a sub to the channel would be tremendous. Okay, as much as I love talking about bikes, I prefer riding them. So let's do that. And first impressions, just wow. This bike is sensationally quick. And we'll find out how quick in the wind tunnel later. But out here on my local roads and routes and Strava segments I know really well with a power meter, it's bloody quick. And it just goes you to ride faster everywhere. Up, down and across. And another thing people rarely talk about with aero bikes is how rapid they are going downhill. All that aero benefit really matters when you're going 60, 70, 80 kilometers per hour. 
It's a bike that really compels you to ride faster. I know that sounds a bit cliche, but it doesn't feel happy riding at low speeds. Everything about it compels you to go faster. The narrow handlebar, the firm ride, the 1.5 geometry, all designed for racing. Because of course, this is an out and out race bike. If I was young enough, fit enough to go road racing, this is a bike I want. The speed, the acceleration, the responsiveness, everything you want from a road race bike. With this bike, you'd have no excuses at all. So it feels fast out here in the real world, but what happens when you go to a wind tunnel? Okay, let's crunch some numbers and don't worry, it won't be too geeky. So with the Madone in the stock configuration, so the Bonchari wheels and the 25 mil wide tires it came with, here is the data in the wind tunnel. And to make this as relatable to us here in the real world, riding at normal speeds, I've done the testing at two speeds, 30, and 40 kilometers per hour, and then three your angles, the angle of the wind coming towards you when you're riding along the road. So zero, straight on, five and 10 degrees. This is the same as the Giants and Canyon testing previously. Next up, I swapped the wheels for some control wheels I'm using at the moment for this wind tunnel testing, a set of MV 4.5s with 27 mil wide tires. I only use 27, 28, 30 mil wide tires for all the riding I do. So it's more relatable to me and hopefully to you at home as well. And what's interesting is that despite the wide tires, which you might think would be slower, give more drag, actually give lower drag when the wind are coming straight ahead by nearly, well, actually 10 watts difference. And we mustn't forget the impact that the tire on the rim, the whole system aero makes, not just a tire width on its own. Now, what I would love to do in an ideal world is have the old Madone to see how it compares to a new Madone and validate or verify Trek's own claims for a new Madone. But I don't know how useful that is unless you're buying this new bike from the old bike. So I took my giant TCR into the wind tunnel at the same time and with the same NV wheels and the same position, everything the same, the results are very interesting because this is a non-aero lightweight all-round bike compared to an all-out pure aero race bike. And you would think, I thought certainly the Madone would be way faster or have lower drag than the Giant TCR by a huge margin. But the difference is actually really small. So looking at the high speed of 40 k an hour to start with, with the zero yaw angle, there's only about six watts difference with the Giant TCR being slower. But that isn't a huge margin. I thought given the Madone's aero handlebar and that handlebar being narrow and all the aero profiles around the fork and the head tube, the difference would be much bigger than the five or six watts it actually is. The differences are bigger when you increase your angle, so five and 10 degrees, the Madone definitely pulls ahead. Now, clearly at higher speeds and with some wind angle, the Madone is offering less drag than the Giant TCR. But straight ahead, at speeds of 40k an hour, going by my testing, the Madone isn't actually that much faster at all. If worth remembering, these are lower speeds than most pros race at. This is a race bike, remember. And most companies are testing at speeds higher than this. So 45 and 50k an hour are the usual sort of speeds they are testing at. And at those speeds, the Madone, you would expect, given what I'm seeing here, would pull ahead even more. But at lower speeds, more relatable at real world speeds, the differences aren't as big as I thought. Certainly not as big as the difference out on the road. Out on the road, a track feels way faster than a giant. But in a wind tunnel, not so much. So a fascinating test. I always loved the old Madone for that fairly unique combination of speed and comfort, thanks to the ISO speed decoupler. And without doing a side by side comparison, it's tricky to make a real assessment of the difference but from my experience this bike is definitely firmer than the old bike but an easy fix is fitting some wide tyres the MV wheels and 27mm wide tube tyres made a big difference to the ride comfort but does it really work as a regular road bike for those of us like me who like riding fast but want a decent dose of comfort and a real world usability on rough roads I just can't see myself 
living with and riding the Madone every day of the week, it never lets you forget it's a race bike. It's always reminding you that you could go faster and you should go faster. Now, the price of this bike, the Range Chopping SLR9 with SRAM Red ETAP axis, carbon Bontrager ALS wheels, Bontrager saddle, tyres. It's a frankly ridiculous £13,800. And that's an eye watering price. And there's no way bikes should be that sort of money. So that is staggering, really. But it is worth adding that this SLR range, the new Madone, is only available in this SLR configuration to start with does start from £6,850, so a bit more accessible, well it's half the price of this bike here, and shouldn't be any slower really, although it will be heavier with the low grade components it will have on it. But what I'm really excited to see, hopefully in the not too distant future, is an SL version of this. So the same frame, but in a low grade of carbon fibre, with a weight penalty, but a hopefully lower and much more accessible price point. So hopefully that will come along fairly soon. And that price is even more staggering when you consider how much cheaper a top of the range Canyon Air Road is. The new Giant Propel, even though that is fairly expensive, is still cheaper than this bike. And even a specialized Tarmac SL7, which probably not as aero as this, is quite a bit cheaper in that range chopping s work trim. So Trek is definitely commanding quite a hefty premium for this bike over its nearest rivals, which is hard to, um, Get your head around to be honest, but there you go. It climbs pretty well too, especially if you come steaming into a shallow gradient climb at a full chat. You can maintain that speed easier and for longer until the gradient really kicks in. And only then do you really feel like you're being held back. And that's really me speaking and my lack of fitness and power and VO2 max. So if you're racing a hilly course, not mountainous, but lumpy. You get the aero benefits on the climbs too. The handling is pointy, uh, not twitchy or anything like that, but definitely a very responsive bike that turns uh, with minimal input. So great for cornering precision, uh, a bike that moves around in the peloton really easily. So if you want to go racing or you just love riding as fast as you possibly can everywhere, I do know a few people who ride like that, I'm not going to mention any names, and you can afford one of these SLR models, well, to be honest, you won't be disappointed at all. And if you want to see a first ride off the Giant Propel I mentioned earlier, then check out this video right up here. And there will be a comparison of that bike and this bike coming very soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting the button down here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.